So yes, uh, my name is Holly Andrea Faring, and today I'll be talking about the use of correlative turbidides to determine, to determine historic seismic activity in the western Gulf of Corinth. This study takes place in the Corinth Gulf, which is in the south of Greece, and it's located over the seismically active Corinth Rift. I will specifically be speaking about a canyon found in the western tip of the Gulf, and this canyon, it transports sediment from fan deltas, which is the primary source of sedimentation to the Delphic Plateau. The main fan deltas found in this, this area originate from the Mornos River to the northwest and the Aranios River to the southeast. There are recorded bottom currents in this area and the sedimentation rate decreases from west to east. A past study of Becker's et al. 2017 found that sediment failures from the slopes of these deltas have been recorded as layers of coarse grain sediments or turbidites and proposed the basin floor as a promising, uh, and a basin floor including the canyon, as a promising site for long term paleo seismological records. Turbidites can be caused by several different factors, including flooding, tsunamis, and other submarine landslides. But specifically in this study, we will be looking at earthquakes as a trigger for turbidites. Earthquakes can trigger large mass flows, which cause large turbidity currents with a large spatial extent and high level of material. Also specifically within this region, we potentially expect to see simultaneous slope failure from multiple deltas that could be recorded within the canyon. The hypothesis of the study then is that seismic is determined by using correlative turbidides within the western Gulf of Corinth. The materials for this study are four cores that were acquired by Beckers in 2014. They are called CAN because they were located in the canyon. And they are CAN 1 and 4 located to the west and CAN 2 and 3 located heading further east. They were collected using a Bentos gravity core and ranged from a size of 2 meters in the more... Uh, sedimentarily active area and 1.2 meters where sedimentation is slower. Also done by Beckers in 2014 was analysis using the geotech. This looked at magnetic susceptibility, gamma density, and color reflectance, as well as acquiring high resolution pictures. Also done by Beckers was X-ray fluorescence core scanning, which was used to semi-quantitatively determine the elemental composition of the cores. Done by this study was grain size analysis of CAN2, done using a Master Sizer 2000. And the grain size analysis for CAN1 and 3 was provided by Sergio et al. 2016 on short cores that were taken in this approximately the same location. Also done by this study included uh, medical x-ray computed tomography or CT scans, which were done to visualize density changes within the cores. To start the results, uh, we are going to look at the four cores. Here we have cores one through three displayed with their depth starting from the top and heading down toward the bottom. And we have the image of the core supplied by the geotech. We have the CT scan visualization. We have an event log, which I'll go into more in just a moment. And we have the grain size analysis. The cores are composed of a yellowish brown hemipelagic sediment interspersed with coarser grained layers from two to 58 millimeters thick and small lenses and patches of similarly coarse grain material. The events were determined using the color, grain size, and density change, and were defined as layers or lenses of more, with more than one centimeter of hemipelagic sediment separating them. <clears throat> and the events recorded are in that event log. 
The cores were then categorized into hemipelagic sediment, background sedimentation, and three different types of events. These events are large events, which are greater than three, mil three centimeters thick and are composed of thick over three centimeter uh, layers or stacks of multiple layers with at least uh, extending the whole width of the core, but have less than one centimeter of hemipelagic sediment separating them. Small events are events less than three centimeters thick and are composed of at least one complete layer extending the whole width of the core. Highly disturbed or incomplete events. This category includes the events that are so reworked or disturbed that they have no longer have a clear start or end. This category also includes small lenses and patches that do not be, appear to be associated with small or large events. After this categorization was done, there was then a principal component analysis performed on the composition data acquired from CANs 1, 2, and 3. CAN 4 did not, was not scanned by the XRF, so did not have elemental composition data. These PCAs were performed looking at the composition of all three cores combined, including all sedimentation, exclusively looking at background sedimentation from all three cores, and only looking at event sedimentation from all three cores. These PCAs included information from sulfur, bromine, rubidium, titanium, iron, potassium, aluminum, silicon, strontium, and are represented, represented in dimensions one and two for all three cores. The tables associated with the graphs show how well the elements are represented in dimensions one through four. There are four groups that the elements do important are groups two and three. Group two is represented in green and includes rubidium, iron, and titanium. And group three is represented in red and includes strontium and calcium. These are the most important because they are anti-correlated and this indicates that group two is not created in the same area as group three and suggests that they are detrital in origin. Uh, there is no significant difference between all three uh, segments of the sediment, and this indicates that they are all of the same origin, and there is no increased detrital input as would be expected from events that are primarily from flooding events. Next, we have the individual PCAs. These were done on the same uh, set of elements and using the same parameters. These show the composition of the individual cores, the comparison of the composition of the individual cores. CAN2 is represented, or CAN1 is represented in blue, CAN2 is represented in red, and CAN3 is represented in green. You can see there's no significant difference between the three cores within any of the segments of the sediment. This indicates they're very comparable cores. Finally, for the actual correlation of the cores, this was done using proxies from the geotech and XRF data and was done looking exclusively at the background sedimentation of the cores to remove any bias that may have been formed through the peaks from the events. We looked at magnetic susceptibility, gamma density, color reflectance through L, A, and B, and XRF data from calcium, silicon, bromine, titanium, and the ratio between calcium and titanium. This is the correlation that was done between the cores. The cores were correlated from east to west so that the cores with the longest record and the slowest sedimentation rate were correlated first, moving toward the cores with the shortest record and highest sedimentation rate. This are, these are the correlations proposed between CANs 2 and 3. They're represented in red. There are four correlations proposed, the most convincing of which are the two uh, correlations at the bottom showing a strong correlation between the calcium-titanium and titanium uh, XRF readings 
in both cores. Next are the correlations proposed between CANS 1 and 2. These are three correlations shown represented in green. Next are the correlations between CAN4 and CAN1. These are limited because there is no XRF data for CAN4, but four correlations are proposed, um, shown here in yellow. Once these correlations were done, the events were then added back. <clears throat> this study exclusively looked at large events because seismic activity is expected to trigger larger events that would be recorded within our large event category. Only two events were able to be correlated between the cores, and the cores are CAN1 and CAN4. The events that were correlated are an event shown at 80 centimeters between CAN1 and CAN4 and 115 centimeters in, or in 80 centimeters in CAN1 and 115 centimeters in CAN4. An event at 132 centimeters in CAN1 and 159 centimeters in CAN4. With this, we must reject our hypothesis that we can use correlative turbidites to determine seismic activity. Not one single event was able to be correlated across all four cores, and this would indicate that this technique is not the best method to determine seismic activity in this area. The only cores that were able to be correlated were CANS 1 and 4, and these are the most closely located to each other at only 800 meters apart. And they are also the closest to the Mornos Delta, where the highest mass flows are most likely to have originated. Possible reasons for this are that the distance of the gravity flows may not have gone as far as expected and may have shown only as very thin events in farther cores from the, from the failure or not appeared at all. Also, there is high levels of reworking all throughout these cores, indicating strong bottom currents and bioturbation that may have disturbed smaller events so much that they were no longer recognizable. Also, the assumption that seismic triggering may have caused simultaneous slope failure may have been incorrect, and the triggering of only one mass, only one slope failure may have appeared smaller than initially expected. Suggestions for further study include larger amounts of cores so that cores could be more easily correlated. Uh, together, and then radiocarbon dating as another proxy for correlation. The next three were, were tended to be included in the original scope of the study, but had to be stopped due to coronavirus, and include lead-210 and cesium-137 top core dating, quantitative XRF background sedimentation analysis, uh, complete grain size analysis and complete grain size analysis of all cores. And this would have given us a better idea of event characterization and more proxies to where we could have correlated the cores. Thank you. And are there any questions?